It's a pleasure to have you still with us on The Breakfast. For now, we'll look at the papers. I have joining us for this uh, segment, um, Ezekiel Ia Etuk. He is a public affairs analyst. He joins us from Aquibum State via Zoom. Thank you very much for your time. Always a pleasure to be on that amazing station, Plus TV Africa. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. Um, we have some papers uh, this morning. Uh, we have The Punch. We have The Nation. We have Tribune. Um, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's start things off with the Punch newspaper. The big one on your screen is that amazing headline for PhD, um, 200 master's holders apply. Senate tackles Kayamu again on slots. Kanu gets 44,000, Benue 23,000, Lagos 20,000, Enugu 17,000. Don't blackmail us with slots, Senate warns um, Minister of State for Labour. I mean, let's be clear here that it's about 20,000 Naira jobs. That's the federal government, 774,000 unskilled, 20,000 Naira jobs per month. And before we talk about something else, let's four PhD holders, 200 master's degree holders. What does that say about us? I, w one of the greatest challenges that I have is that as a nation, we really don't seem to know what has befallen us as a people. And when we do these analysis, I don't know to what extent we are able to look at the larger implications of what we are seeing. Now, I'm happy you brought to the fore the fact that this is a job that is about 20,000 a month for a period of probably three months or something like that. And then you have a PhD holder. Now, the question is, what state of mind would this person have been? What has been the condition of this person that after having a PhD, you would have to apply for a job of 20,000 naira or even 50,000 naira or even of 100,000 naira? Then you now have over 200 master's degree holders. I think it goes beyond the fact that we're having problems of unemployment. It goes into the problem of um, underemployment. It looks at our educational system. To what extent are we comfortable with the present curriculum that we run in the schools? Isn't it time that we had a very, very serious national economic summit on education? Yeah, this morning I was just having a chat with my wife and then we're just talking generally and looking at certain situations and something came to the fore, something very, very instructive. Why do the customs do physical inspection at the port? The answer is simple. You declare one thing as supposed to be the content and yet the content is different from what is declared. And because we know that the content is often different from what is contained, the customs have to do due diligence of making sure that the content as declared is actually what is in it. Now, what's the implication of this? What does this prognosticate? It is that politicians have declared intention and we take them by their words on their intention. Now, what stops me from going to FAN and saying, or going to Ibom Air and saying, I'm a pilot. What Ibom Air management will do is like, okay, we, 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 we're happy to hear from you, but the issue of a pilot is so important. Can we see your papers? Can we see the school you went to? Can we have interrogation of the relevant experience you've had? They've got to go through all these processes because before they can bring me into their cockpit. Now we have Nigeria as a nation, more important than an airplane. And yet we do not profile the people that want to be our president. We do not profile the people that want to be our governors. What is the meaning of that? It is that we have people in the seat of power who do not have the capacity, the capability to deliver on the mandate of the office. Uh, so Mr. Anya, Mr. Anya, if you let, want let, let a me solution interrupt to our you. educational system, let, let me the interrupt time has you. come when Nigerians should come in and help those people at the seat. 
Instead of believing that they have the capacity, they sure don't have it. Okay, I, I was going to go back to something you said, the analogy you gave about customs doing due diligence before they get in, yes. uh, what you declare yes. and what is actually in. Um, yes, we yes. know that there is a failing in leadership. But I, I was thinking also, somebody that has gone through the education process to the level of a PhD, and then somebody that has gone through the process, let's imagine that person did the master's degree in Nigeria with all the bureaucracies and all the troubles they go through for years before they get that master's degree. Doesn't it say something as well of the content of these people who would be applying for these jobs? I mean, isn't that something yeah, to think I, about? I, I, I get you clearly. Again, it goes into, you see, when I say we need to really come down and interrogate our educational system, the rot is beyond the surface. The first question is, we should take that person that has a PhD or even that person that has a, a master's degree, even the person that has a first degree. The first question you ask yourself is to what extent? Let's have just an oral interview with these people. People purchase education certificates. People don't really go through schools. We've had this. Go look at your families. You know, I, I don't know. We really, we really need to sit down as a nation and look at where we are and where we are going. Because now, some days back, there was this altercation between two parents on network in a private school. Now, one of the parents, the child, wanted to go and read. And the student said, don't bother reading. It's gotten sorted out. And he said, no, I don't believe that. I want to read. They said, don't bother. And it got to a point where the student got bullied by the others. So the mother was so infuriated, she took it up on the, the, the platform of, of, of the parents' um, uh, guardians' association. And one of the parents said, Madam, stop this holier than thou um, attitude. We, we, we want our parents, our children to progress. Do you know what that means? The parents are helping to get answers so that their children will pass exams. Now, when this child passes this exam, question is, what does he have? Nothing. So these people that have master's, master's degree holders, or they are master's degree holders, that you are saying, under the school I went to, under the school you went to, with a master's degree, you are primed to be able to do something. But the question is, how many people have been through schools and how many of them have got I'm an employer I've never I've never worked for anybody I've employed all so almost 30 40 years I've been an employer and when you see the quality of food that are supposed to be graduate coming for interviews even I'm an architect those who are architectures to graduate in short by the time you just take them through the preliminaries and you find it difficult for them to define what architecture is. And this, an architecture graduate, it's, we really need to understand that the foundation of any, any nation is education. All and right. by the time that our foundation is faulty as a nation, I think that we that call ourselves stakeholders in the Nigeria project must come together at this point as an imperative to be able to take back our country and put our country on the page that is sustainable we have the capacity to be the greatest, one of the greatest in the surface of the earth. It, it just needs us is. to wake up. It most certainly is an imperative at this point because, I mean, it beats the imagination, truly. All right, let's uh, take a look at some other um, uh, headlines on the Punch newspaper yeah. uh, this morning. Or should I just go ahead and ask you to pick on something that really catches your interest? Uh, yeah, you know, you know there, there's something about NLC and COVID-19. All right, let me this take a COVID quick COVID-19 is starting to give me personal headache. Yeah, I think I'm, I've seen because it. Will fight states like, hiding behind yes. COVID-19 to sack workers? Yes. You know, it, it's like it's become a bargaining tool. Where you think you can get something by declaring large numbers, this is speculative anyway, you find yourself, you know, um, ramping up figures and things like that just to be able to get the numbers. On the other hand, Every day I look at the, you know, you, know you, you run all these numbers from the states on a weekly basis. And I've been looking at that of a do and on do, and I'm confused. 
when I see what on television, people going around recklessly, the association is as if nothing is expected. One would expect that the numbers will be so, 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 uh, what's the word, frightening, that the rest of us in Nigeria will say, wow, this is for real. But by the time that we look at the numbers, we look at what is going on, we look at the disconnect, the average man is saying, oh, forget, this thing is just, um, you know, political. I don't think that's fair. I think Mr. President ought to have called the chairman of INEC to make a law, to make it, you know, as part of the protocols of campaigning, you cannot take this mass movement. You must insist on town hall meetings. Everybody should be seated. Take it whether you want to do one, one hour, run as much as they are waiting for you. You address them, you move to the next. We'll have the same campaigning. And then we'll now let people know that COVID-19 is the federal government. When I say the federal government, I'm not talking of presidential task force. They depend on Mr. Pre the Mr. President needs to stand up and say, enough, that can stop today. By still, time still, it still on the COVID-19. It moves on to Ondo the way it tends to be going. Everybody's going to say, oh, forget this COVID-19. And let me say yeah, that COVID-19 stay, is real. Staying with COVID-19, sir. just um, refusing to ramp up their to, to, to the testing just for political expediency. And if that is true, what should be the job of the man on the seat? Um, let's let's, stay, let's see how many um, headlines Mr. we can President. cover in the time available. Yeah. I want to take your quick thought on this one uh, because transporters at some point, we actually had a report here uh, where some transporters said they weren't getting any uh, support from the government. When you put rules in place, don't carry three uh, people, carry two people, or don't, depending on uh, the size of your vehicle. Now we hear that the federal government in this Punch newspaper is saying that 10 billion naira palliative has been approved for transporters. I wonder if you can just spend like 30 seconds on that so we can uh, go over to another paper. Okay, I'll spend less than 30 seconds. I'll say that great job, but that the, the housing sector needs more palliatives because if the transport should not carry more than three people, which of course they are carrying everybody. I mean, you and I, I mean, we, we, we are on the streets. So they are, not, they are not keeping to the protocols. So if the federal government is giving the palliative, are they also going to enforce the protocols but I ask you, social distances, on housing, we're having 10 people sleep in a room. When you carry two people in the transport and they come back and sleep 10 and 5 in a room, what have you done? Let us do these things holistically. Number one is let there be water all over the country. Number two, let there be a policy on social housing so that we start to address our problems from first principles. All right, let's uh, take a look at the Nigerian Tribune now. Amoteko won't be subsumed under community policing. That's Southwest governors. Uh, there's been this uh, fear. I actually asked the guest earlier on the breakfast about this, that there is, might be um, some subtle move by the uh, federal government to uh, subvert the... Uh, current regional security outfit. So, uh, what's your take on this big one on the Nigerian Tribune? You, 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 you know, we know we, we, we claim to run a federation and then we forget that the, one of the protocols of a federation is that the federating units have capacities to enact laws that will govern them. That's why we have the state count of that. If a state house of assembly has enacted a law that does not run contrary to the, to, the, to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is the commissioner of police to say, no, we don't accept it? You don't have such a say. This is not a military state. The Southwest, they've been very smart, and I give them kudos for it. You know, two things. The first is that the primary essence of government and governance as enshrined in our constitution Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B, says that the security, that's the first word, security, and second, welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. But In don't you think case, this will be like a yes. duplication, a duplication of, you know, effort? Because if you have, you're saying community policing, is the federal government going to integrate with this regional outfit or is it going to be no. suddenly yeah. completely managed by the police? Things. What happens? There with are three things. There are three things. There is the federal police, 
that's the national police. There is the proposed community policing. And there is a motekun, in quote, which is at this point in time um, like um, uh, a, a, a cover for regional, you know, or state, you know, security, security outfits. Outfit. Now, these are three different elements. National police is in the constitution. The uh, regional, the, um, the community policing is being proposed. And now that of the regional is already in their state constitutions, as it were, their laws. Now, you, the federal has come with community policing. The question is, why didn't the federal integrate with the regional policing or the state policing? And now they want the state to part fund the community policing. And the state says, we're already funding the national policing. We can't even pay our salaries. Where's the money for this? We are doing the third arm because we have vowed, we've taken an oath of allegiance to secure our people. And unfortunately, the national police is not securing our people and we cannot afford the luxury of sitting down and crying wolf and giving the excuse, we must do something because we took an oath of office to secure the people. And they've come up with this. All and right. I was very, very happy with the governor of um, Ondo State that says, IGP, sorry, if you don't like what we've done, see you in court. All right, and let's, let's look at is. some other um, headlines quickly. Time certainly flies when conversation is interesting. Um, I'll just run through yes, some sir. of the headlines. You take one, and then we'll move on to another paper. Uh, Naira heads yes. to 500 Naira to dollar at parallel markets. And then we also have Buhari suggests 12 months for final conclusion of criminal cases. That's an offshoot of the MBA uh, National Conference. Um, I murdered another woman after I escaped from uh, detention says suspected um, Ibado, serial killer. Uh, just beneath um, that uh, big screamer on Amoteku, we have FG inaugurate seven-man probe panel on Unilag crisis. EFCC uncovers another 130 million naira looted funds for Quara. Presidency to pay for forensic audit of 12,000 NDDC projects. And there are a couple of writers to that story, uh, uh, but interest of time. Uh, the Mali situation is also captured here. And uh, interestingly, there is something from addition of the AFDB. He says, AFDB will help Africa recover projected 408 point, $409.8 billion COVID-19 losses. That seems like a good one uh, for it. Uh, the Ado election also came in here with INEC to retain 2019 voter register for Edo uh, election. Some politics as well uh, there for you. Uh, Mr. Um, yeah, Edtuk, over to you now quickly. One. All right. Time, time is sure playing a game on As me, in. but this is a loaded paper, and there are so many um, issues that I Very. like. But let me start from NDDC. You know, when, when there was this news of the release of um, about um, 770 million for the audit, yesterday, I think I got more calls and congratulations than probably the members of the NDDC board. Uh, because I've been on this and I've sat on it and everybody knows me around the nation that I want this audit to go on like no man's business. So I got a lot of congratulations. One would have thought that I, I was the one to do the audit and enjoy that money. Well, let's all hope the same. we'll what see comes the out? end of it because we know that uh, we talk about audits. Audit take, seems to yeah. take forever. There should be some sort no, of time no, frame. No, no, Let me tell you what we've done. We've gone ahead to, to sensitize virtually all the members of the Niger Delta community. The reason is simple. The NDDC has been a federal body located within the region and not a regional body located to take care of the region. And this is what the audit is going to uncover. So if we are going to spend this amount of money on these professional bodies, we are going to sit on them and make sure that the audit report comes out. Two things are going to happen. The very first is that people are going to know that when you want to award NDDC jobs to anybody, you better make sure that you are careful to award it to not cronies of the presidency of the National Assembly, but competent people who are going to come and do the work professionally. 
Number two, they are going to know that when you do NDDC job, you don't collect money and go and share with the others and think that it's buried. A day is going to come when they're going to visit. The ultimate aim or uh, objective of the whole thing or what we stand to gain at the end of the day is that henceforth, when the new board comes in, they are going to be doing their works professionally, knowing that a day of reckoning will come. If not today, it might be tomorrow. We're talking of audit of how many years back that did several uh, regimes and administrations. So that's going to be good for us. And the third is that likelihood, as a matter of fact, when the, 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 the audit issue was muted at the beginning, so many contractors mobilized to site immediately. Now, somewhere along the line, they started stalling because they thought this is better. Now that Mr. President has said, go ahead, everybody's going to go back to site. And well, let, let, let's, see, let, it on the long let's see, so let's the see how it plays has out. has my 100% um, support, and I'm very happy. Now, let, let's go to the Naira. Now, okay. some days back, I needed to make an online um, You need to do it in 30 I, seconds, I called, sir. You need to do it in 30 seconds so we can take one seconds. more paper. Yes. Now, I called uh, you know, the man that I usually use, and he, he tells me, sir, if you can hold on a little, the value of the Naira is, is going to um, show up uh, once the airlines are open. And he did an amazing analysis for me. What did he say? He said, number one, many people that are caught abroad are busy exchanging their money to be able to maintain their upkeep. So once the international airlines um, um, routes are open, they will come back home. In which case, that amount of error they were changing to go back, you know, to sustain them will be off. Second, so many people are buying Naira to be able to buy tickets to come back. Once that initial um, uh, period is over, the, the pressure on the Naira will be less. Third, so many people that were stuck in Nigeria are going to go back to continue their work and the monies they have borrowed from people while they were in Ni 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 Nigeria, they are going to be sending back those monies to the people. So there's going to be a large inflow and the Naira is going to like uh, stabilize somewhat. That's one part of the argument, and it makes sense to me. So All right. For now, by the time that um, Central Bank um, plays down on some of the things that we, the common man, can't really understand because of the disparity and how uh, foreign exchanges are located, I think that sooner or later, I'm not one of those that sees the Naira going to a thousand Naira to a dollar. I'm not one of them. I'm one of those seeing it come down to about 400 in, um, within probably towards the end of the year. All right. And um, as for the young guy that murdered six people and was let off, I'm not looking at the story. I'm, I'm sick and tired of the story. I'm looking at the inspector general of police, looking at him with my two eyes open even at night without sleeping. I want him to tell Nigerians how that young man escaped and what is being done. This issue of you see, the three C's of life, I keep talking about it, and the time has come when we must visit it. They are the chances that come your way. They are the choices that you make. And they are the consequences. Now, if a man chose to age, I'm speculating this time. They need to know, tell me that I'm wrong. A, 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 a serial murder, murderer to escape. I want to know what they... I don't want all this uh, we are investigating. You don't I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of Nigerian, a lot of Nigerians... A lot of Nigerians. If the IGP takes us serious, you should tell us how that guy escaped and what is being done to serve as a deterrent to others to, to make sure that they sit up. Certainly, a lot, of, a lot of Nigerians would love uh, to get that um, um, feedback, to know what's going on uh, with that suspect. We'll, we'll keep our eyes open and hopefully uh, we'll find some answers from our security agencies. I want to say thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Etuk, for your time and your very insightful contribution on Off the Press. My pleasure. All right. Take care of yourself.